Hi everyone, welcome back. This is the 21st video in our series on building a chess engine from scratch in the Java programming language. We uh, just finished up talking about the player class and now I want to delve into the move class and all of its concrete um, subclasses. Uh, before I do that, there's a little bit of cleanup that I want to do here. So in the board class, I can mark the builder that's passed into the board constructor as final. We never really <clears throat> addressed the issue of how we resolve the current player. I talked about it, but I didn't do it. Uh, so the way that it's going to look is we're going to say builder.nextMoveMaker. And we're going to create a method on here called choose player. And we're going to pass in this dot white player, oops, player, and this dot black player. Okay. And so let's see. Let's see if the IDE can help us here. Create abstract method choose player. And um, okay, that's great. And all we need to do here is implement the method and let's do it here as well real quick and then we'll come back okay so the white player right the white alliance is going to choose the white player and the black player is going to choose the bl the black alliance is going to choose the black player kind of a nice little polymorphic trick there that we can use Oops. So let's go ahead and clean that up. And while we're marking <clears throat> fields as final, I think, oh, black player, yeah, I didn't mark these final. It's always nice to go back and clean up your code. And um, I'm usually pretty strict about these type of things. Let's mark these final, and I think I didn't mark the constructor for the king final. Ha! Huh. That's right, I didn't. Okay. Okay. Um, so let's move. Come on over here to the move class, and um, you know I said that this was a really important class. This is where things really happen. Um, in terms of making a move, executing a move, what it basically means to execute a move. Um, so let's see how that's going to look. Let's focus first on uh, a simple non-attacking move with a, you know, a major piece, like a knight, if you will, um, and what that would look like. Um, and we might you know, we might refactor this later, um, but uh, let's just sort of let's just sort of walk through this really quickly. And we're probably going to do this in multiple videos as usual. I'm not going to do all the different move types in here, but I just want to so sort of show you what it means to make a move. To make a move on a board does not mean that you mutate that existing board. It means you're going to materialize a new board into existence that represents the board that would exist if you made a board, excuse me, if you made a move on the incoming board, right? So the, so the move has a handle, it has a reference to the incoming board, right, in this board member field, and when you execute the move, it's going to return a new board it's not going to mutate that existing final board that was passed in. Okay. So, um, right. So let's see what is that going to be. Let's first uh, use a builder to help us materialize that new board. Final board builder. Builder is equal to new builder. Right. And uh, I always like to use the static import. And, and let's go uh, for final piece, piece in this board, the incoming board's current player's active pieces. OK, 
Okay. If not this dot moved piece equals the piece that we are traversing over, then simply on the builder, say builder dot set piece, that piece. Okay. I'm going to explain this in a minute. And then another for loop that says final. And you don't have to do it this way. I, I sort of like to. We could have set wrote written a method called get all active pieces and done it that way, but I actually prefer to do it this way. It's a little bit more readable to me. So final piece piece in this dot board dot current players opponent active pieces, right? We're just going to say builder dot set piece piece and builder dot we're going to have one more set piece call outside of the constructor here and I'll put just sort of a comment block here this is going to represent the p the move piece the moved piece if you will after it's made its move we're going to do a set piece here right so let's ju let's just actually fill this in with with null for now it's obviously wrong but we'll fix it and say builder dot set move maker to this dot board dot current player opponent alliance and return builder dot build okay so let's walk through and explain this and clean it up a little bit Okay, so we're going to come in here, we're going to use the board builder. Uh, it's going to help us materialize a new board to return from execute. We're going to traverse through all of the current player, you know, the, the incoming board's current player. You're going to traverse through all of his pieces, and for all of the pieces that aren't the moved piece, we know exactly what we want to do. We just want to place them on the new board, right? No change, no delta there. Right, so that's all we're doing here. Um, and of course, in order for this to work, we're going to need a hash code and equals method um, on the move class, and we don't have that yet. Um, so I will I will introduce that, uh, but it doesn't exist right now. Um, so after we do this, then in the next for loop, we do the same thing for the enemies pieces. So let's say the incoming let's say the incoming um, board uh, is the current player is white, right? So we're going to go through all of white's pieces, and if the move is, you know, we're going to go through and set all of the pieces on the new outbound board that are not the current move piece, right? Then we're going to do the same thing for black. We don't need this if check because obviously the opponent, it's not the opponent's turn to move, so they're not going to have a moved piece, right? Um, then we're going to set the move maker. Oh, it looks like I, let's see, this is going to be set piece, not set move maker. Then we're going to set the piece for the moved piece, right? The piece that's moving, we're going to move it via this set piece call, right? That's what this next line, that's what this line right here represents. Then we're going to set the move maker to the opponent. So in our example, we'd set the move maker. If the incoming move maker, if the incoming board's move maker was white, then this call would set the move maker for the outgoing board to black. Hopefully that makes sense to everybody. Um, you know, I encourage you to comment in the comment box if uh, that wasn't a clear enough description. Um, and again, remember that we're not quite done in the sense that we haven't introduced a um, hash code and equals method on piece or its subclasses. So this is really just going to de um, degenerate into reference equality, which is not what we want. Uh, so we, we, we do have a to do here. Let's put a to do in here. To do um, hash code and equals for pieces, right? 
Um, so, right. So here, when we do the set piece, all we need to do is we need to um, we need to move the piece. So I'm I'm actually I'm gonna leave that to the next video. So what we'll do is we'll talk about in the next video we will do we will implement hash code and equals on piece and we will talk about how to actually you know set the uh, for for each piece how to actually do move it by updating creating a new piece that's exactly the same as the moved piece but with updated with an updated piece position um, as its member field. Okay, thanks guys.